So we had this idea um, because of the nature of all of our jobs and sometimes we're not all able to sync our schedules that we might take time after each time we do these devotion sessions to talk about what we reflected on and maybe what we had in common or it was interesting you pointed this out, or that, that type of thing. Um, and since this recording is the first time we have an opportunity to do that, that's what we're doing. You get what you get. <laughs> yeah, you get whatever comes your way. Um, I did have a quote that popped into my head. And obviously this, this video, if this is published, will come after all the, the devotions come out. So uh, you're going to hear us reference each other's devotions. But this is the last one. So in theory, if you were a good person, you watched all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, so I've been, while we've been in, uh, well, we're not in quarantine, we're not in lockdown, we're social distancing. We're, uh, you know, and in my case, that means I'm staying home all the time, pretty much. And during this time, I've been relearning how to play the guitar. I'd started a few years ago and then haven't had time, now I've been picking it up. One of the songs I've been playing is a, a Tom Petty song. And there's this, uh, one of the verses in the song, he says, yeah, it's a rough way of living. It's a hard price to pay. She looked around and she just couldn't see it any other way. Because being good looking had its limits. And the rich all seemed so poor. Well, some said they were happy, but they could never really know for sure. Uh, and that phrase jumped out at me uh, during our reflections on our devotions because i thought it was funny each one of us tackled this fact that happiness and joy are not the same thing they're not if somebody walked away from what we shared that would probably be the primary thing yeah well one thing i've learned um you know raising four kids and having grandchildren and and having my own life issues to deal with and, and learn to overcome is that um, you can be heartbroken and still be joyful. And mm -hmm. it's it, that sense, I liken it to when you step out under the dark night sky and you stand under the stars and you feel your smallness in this universe and yet you are so in tune to being just being with God. And there is that, there is a deep sense of peace and joy that is in that. Um, when I listen to the song, Lord of the Dance, hmm. if you don't know that song, you need to learn it. <laughs> and the person who plays it needs to play it like it's an Irish jig. But I just want to stand and twirl. I just, I just, it just, it's the whole gospel story, but it is for the most part an upbeat song. But it just gives me that overwhelming sense of just being in the presence of God, just being who I am, and this joy just floods in. Has nothing to do with what's going on around me. Has everything to do with my relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, maybe that's why we're kind of envious of children, right? Yes. When you look at children, they have that carefree abandon. Right. Uh, I mean, you can have the poorest child in the world who comes from the worst family life possible, but they are ecstatic when they pick that dandelion, yeah. right? I, I don't remember where I heard it or read it at, um, so I can't give you the quote for it, but I one time, I think I read it, um, the article or book said that the, if you want to see the purest form of worship, watch a child mm -hmm. watch a child you remember when we when you were younger and we attended oxford umc as a family uh we had a little girl just probably maybe five ken and every time the music played she would be dancing down the aisles and spinning around and go back to her parents and we as adults want to hurry up and grab them and sit them down in a chair <laughs> and yet she was being she was just being in God's presence and joyful about it. Yeah, that was something I had at Toby Hannah. 
when you know I take off my shoes for preaching. Now I don't even wear socks, and nobody knows. But um, you know, I took off my shoes for preaching. It's always been part, and that's something I know you do, Mom. But at Toby Hannah, we got to the point where the kids would come in, and all their shoes would be thrown into a corner, and they just take off running, and everybody loved it. And I think it was because of that type of thing you're talking about that kind of reckless abandonment into the moment. Dad, you keep trying to chime in here and mom and I keep well, talking. That's okay. I'm, I'm listening and thinking at the same time, you know, you guys are kind of, we're kind of all overlap thoughts in, in our devotions that we brought. And I was listening to Cindy when she talked about going out underneath the stars, because there's a whole long story about her office being up at the stop sign above our house. <laughs> there was no street. We had no street lights or anything like that or sidewalks. So, when you went up there, it was really, really dark. But I get, I get the same feeling um, with that clear, nice sky. I get that same feeling when I'm standing on the ocean shore. I get that same feeling the, the first time I went to to um, the Grand Canyon. Yeah. It's just, it's just, you know, when I, when you come back, you can't really put it into words because it's not, it's not a result as we have been saying of the circumstances that are around you. It's a result of who is inside of you and how you now view those moments when you get them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because we talk all the time about our world going 100 miles an hour and we can't wait to get off. But when we get off of that merry-go-round, we don't know what to do with ourselves. Yeah. You know, at least now with this, with this social distancing and <laughs> not necessarily lockdown, but we have been in our homes quite a bit. I think it's given people an opportunity to to relook at their surroundings and 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 really make a, a connection that they probably haven't made, maybe never made, but probably haven't made in a long time. So I was just getting that from when you guys were talking here. So and I think what we're what you're alluding to, Dad, and and Mom and I have alluded to this is this idea of your place in the universe. Yeah. So in, in my sermon this week, I, I'm using the example, and I say, you are a speck of dust on a ball of rock spinning billions of miles an hour through the vastness of space. Who really cares if you have that extra slice of pie? <laughs> <laughs> right? I agree. And there's such a sense Your of doctor good. does. Your doctor does. <laughs> Uh, but there is, a, there is a sense of joy in knowing that, though. It's a sense of, of release. And isn't that part of what we're talking about as a thread through all of our things? We talk about salvation. We talk about uh, living in the moment. What we're talking about is a sense of release from having to have all the answers, right. having to know what's going on. And I don't want to say that in a way because we all have civic responsibilities. Right. You know, we have a responsibilities as people on this earth to care about the earth, all those things. I don't mean that. I just mean that reckless abandonment of the moment. And um, but you, but you know, it was really encouraging to me with with getting, as Jonathan said, the different perspectives on this. Because I really think we do, most people do, get joy and happiness mixed up. Yes. They're, they're, at, they're at, at worst, they have to be the same thing, you know. But they're, they're really not even close. And uh, I, it's one of those things that over the years, I guess being, you know, 63 years old, I knew that. But now I re know that. <laughs> and I think it happens to us in life a lot. Uh, you hear something and just hearing everybody else talk, and I'm thinking, I think I knew that. What's all that quote? What that, what's that quote you always yelled at me growing up? Me, Kenny, and everybody? I've forgotten more than you will ever know. Never know. Yeah. <laughs> that one that I, I taught you everything you know, not everything I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I forgot that one. That one. <laughs> so yeah, but it, it's just it was good to hear that because we we prepare these separately, you know. So we really don't know. We could all use the same scripture, you know. For all I know, that's what I was afraid of. 
It's like yeah. potluck. It, it, you yeah. have three, three pots of baked beans, but but you know it, it it it's all different. But yet there's some key things in there that were all the same. Well, I thought it was funny that I use Solomon and you use Solomon. I was hoping mom would too. <laughs> you know your you know your you know your mother. I always gotta to try to take a different road. But I, really, I really think that Paul's scripture there, and we're talking about the strength of Christ. He gives me, but Paul is talking about contentment and joy and contentment are closely linked together. It's yeah. like your dad was saying. Um, you know, we, I think it was, you just said something to this, but anyway, we keep, you were talking, I thought we keep consuming stuff. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'll buy more, I'll do more. And eventually I'm going to be happy. Right. And I am until payment number 48 comes, yeah, right, right. you know, yeah. um, and the new smell of the car is gone. Uh, smells more like French fries now from oh, the grandkids wow. in the back yeah. seat, but but those things don't bring contentment. They don't bring that deep joy. Mm -hmm. That deep, deep joy comes from really disentangling ourselves from our circumstances and remembering who and whose we are. Like I used to tell you kids when you would leave home, remember who and whose you are. You are um, yeah, when we think about of, that. So we've tried to tackle I, I know we kind of wandered here and really what we're by wandering in this, you know, we're really talking about how to be joyful in the midst of that, because we're talking about being content where you're at. We're talking about um, a carefree, a way of being carefree with still being socially responsible. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up this recording right here of this part, but um, you know, I think those are some some good thoughts. It's it's interesting to see how these things develop, and we'll just we're all in for the ride. All we can do is be content right where we're at and be joyful. That's it. Doesn't have a thing to do with your circumstances. It has everything to do with your relationship with Christ and one another. I wish I said that. <laughs>